testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, one, two, three. Okay friends, just going to do a wee video here, a wee video podcast on Windows 10 and today we're going to cover Windows 10 service configurations, okay, Windows 10 service configurations. You'll also find me on YouTube as George Russell. And you'll also find me on YouTube as PC Chairman. Okay, so I'm going to cover Windows 10 service configurations. Okay. And what you see in front of you here on your screen is the Windows 10 service configurations by Black Vipers. Okay, Black Vipers website. Now, Black Viper has been out quite a long time. From Windows 98. When Windows XP was first brought out, the Home Edition, the XP Upgrade, and then the XP Full Edition was brought out, I was using Black Vipers Windows 10 service configurations. And at that particular time, there's a lot of services that are basically was very easy, easy hackable to hackers. I was actually closing some of the services that were open by default before Microsoft actually released a patch for to close them. So basically what happened was people that were in the program and etc. Some call themselves hackers. Some are called script kitties. And basically they would use a service to gain access to your operating system or your network. So this particular site here is Black Viper. Windows 10 service configurations. And I will show you how to get to it. To your services in two seconds. But before I do that, you'll want to scroll right down here. This one here is for Windows 10 Home, if you're using Windows 10 Home. This is for Windows 10 Pro. This is for a laptop or tablet. And this is also, if you want to tweak your desktop computer to give you more security and more performance in your operating system. Okay, so to get to your services, I will show you how to do it. The first thing you want to do is go to your control panel on Windows 10. And what you see in front of you is Windows 10 control panel. Now, there's a number of ways of getting it. 
on your Windows 10 operating system. If you go, to, if you take your mouse and go to the left hand corner of your screen, you will see what you have a search box here. If you type into your search box control panel, double click it, you'll get your control panel, what I have in front of me. The next thing you want to do is go to categories here, click the drop down box and go to large icons. Here you have a number of things in your control panel. Okay, so today we're going to cover administrative tools. And I'll show you to you in two seconds. And this is what you will see in front of you on your screen. What we are looking for here is services, one called services here. So we're going to double left click it. And we're going to open up the services. Okay, so let's bring us down. And let's give you a larger uh, satin here. Now let me open this up so you can see it better. So what do you see in front of you friends is a list of services that you have in your Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1, Windows 10 Home, 10 Pro and etc. And each one of these services obviously is there for a reason. So the first thing we want to do is go to the first one here. If you left click it you will get a, a bit of a documentation on it here. And it will explain to you what this particular service is. But some of these services friends are set in manual you will notice. And some are set at automatic. And there's actually some of these services you can actually close. Okay, so if you go to Black Viper's website first, and if you actually print it out, if you if you this particular one here is Windows 10 Pro I have on this computer system. You will notice to the right, it'll say safe for desktop. So the first service that I brought up there was this one here. By default, it is set at manual and it is also safe at manual. But you can actually disable it. So I'll show you how to disable it. Okay, so let's go back to the first service that we were looking at, which was this one here. Now, by checking Black Viper's website, it will basically keep you right that you don't disable a service that you need. Personally, I could do this myself because I've done it not many times, but for someone that has never used it before, okay, this one is set at manual. I'll double click it. And you'll see this wee box pop up here. It'll tell you the description that it provides user account control. It is set up manual. So the first thing I want to do is set it to disable and hit apply. The next thing I have to do is go to recovery. 
you will see that it says first failure, restart the service. So basically, I will take no action. Otherwise, it will restart the service. Do the same again and hit apply and hit OK. So that particular service is now disabled. This one here is obviously a program I'm running, so I'll leave it on automatic. So if we go back again to Black Viper. And we go to the next service. Which is routing service on it is set it manual. But to give you, if you want to tweak your computer, you can actually disable that service. So you would have to go and do the same again. Okay, so let's go back and do the same again to this one. Now some of these services can be exploited. Okay, so we go to this one here and we'll do the same again here. This is the particular one we're looking. So we'll bring that down. And we'll go into the services. And we'll pull this down. So this is the one here. That I set up manual. I'm going to disable it. And this is how I'll go about doing it. And hit apply. Go to recovery. Change out the techno action. And hit apply. Now obviously I can go in and restart that service at any time I want. By doing the same thing again. Okay. If I wanted to restart that service, I basically would double click it, set it back to manual, okay, go to recovery, and basically set it to restart the service. Now, if we have a look at some of these services here, and there's a couple here that years ago weren't actually disabled, and one of them is called Remote Registry, okay. So basically it allows someone to uh, have remote access to your registry settings and basically <laughs> they could mess up your system pretty easy. Now by default Microsoft over the years have realised that and they have disabled it by default. By going back on Windows XP in the early days it was not disabled. It was only until Microsoft released the security patch which actually closed it. And at that time I was actually closing it before they actually released it because I had done a lot of research on the Windows operating services to find out what they're for. And it's handy because sometimes if you're using a printer and you come to this particular one here, which is the service uh, spools print jobs. Sometimes you have to turn that off and restart it if you run into a problem with your printer. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, this is set at automatic because I'm actually using a printer. If you're not using a printer, double click it, go to disable and disable it, and hit apply. Then go to recovery and change the top to first failure and the second failure to take no action otherwise it'll restart when your computer restarts so if you're not using a printer by all means disable that you have a number here for remote access okay and that speaks for itself this particular one here on Windows 10 by default remote registry settings is disabled and that's what you want for security reasons The leg of this one here, server, if you're not using a printer, disable it. Okay, it's set it automatic. And basically, it's uh, sharing over the network, which is my network. Because I use a printer, it is automatic. If you're not using a printer, click the drop down box, click disabled, and click OK. Also, go to recovery. Do the drop down box and click no action. 
And make sure you do that on the second failure and hit apply. Now you can restart that service at any time. TCP and that was BIOS Hover. Okay. You want to disable that there. If you're running the server, obviously you would want to have it set. Disable. In fact, I'm going to I'm going to stop it first. Click stop. And a security sense is the reason I would disable that. Okay, because if you know anything about networking and you know how NetBass working is over TCP IP protocol, you can hack an operating system. Hit apply. Go to recovery, and I want to take no action. There's a few other ones here I could actually disable and I will do it at a later date. Uh, with this time, basically, it's set, by mo it's, set, it's set up manual by default. I'll just disable it because computers do uh, broadcast on the broadcast a certain amount of information over the network. So in a security sense, personally speaking, I disable mine. Okay, so to keep yourselves right, that if you you don't want to disable something that's going to make your operating system unstable, okay? So that's why you go to the website called Black Viper. And let me go back up here to Black Viper. Okay, so this is Black Viper's website. It's called www.blackviper.com. Okay, blackviper.com. And you will get documentation here on it here, okay? All about the Windows services. I would recommend for the first time you use it to read it. It will give you an explanation about your network charge and etc. And what they're basically saying is that all these services are standard with Windows 10 and installed by default. With updates released by Microsoft since the initial retail version or with the add and remove Windows feature control panel. Okay, so it will tell you how to get to it. But you might find this a wee bit geeky for you or a wee bit confusing. So you want to scroll on down to the Windows services. Now you will notice it'll say safe for desktop. And you'll notice that he's got this particular one, application layer gateway service. It's basically an old function and it's no longer required on Windows 10, okay? So you want to disable that. By disabling services that are no longer required, you're using up less resources and uh, processes in the background and you're leaving yourself with a wee bit more memory and RAM to play about with. So to keep yourselves right, go to safe, okay? Or go to tweak if you've got a desktop computer. And take your time and go down each one. Auto time zone updater. You notice that I actually disabled mine. And Black Viper, who is a computer uh, programmer, the guy that owns it. I've been using this from Windows 98. He knows what he's doing and he knows about operating systems. Okay, so the auto time updater. He has recommended disable, okay? And you notice I've done that automatically. So if we scroll on down here, you notice here's another one here. And it tells you it's used by Windows Update for downloading or sharing, okay? Now, if you're not sharing stuff on the network, anything to do with sharing, friends, in a security sense, you want to disable it. So this is basically taking you under the hood of your operating system here. Now, data sharing services, it is recommended, it is set by manual by default. So most, most things with manual by default can be disabled, okay. So let's scroll on down here. 
and he will tell you how to get to your services and there's another page here it should take you to some more so let's go back up so these here are Windows 10 services configurations this particular one here he says disable it okay you notice he says here do not disable this one so don't do it which is your DNS client you need that okay so if you want to google now and you if you're saying to yourself why disable them okay well there's a number of reasons why you would disable certain services on an operating system some that are no longer compatible uh, some are basically can be used for exploiting or gaining access to a network or operating system you notice this one here remote desktop Windows 10 Pro by default it's manual and it's recommended to disable okay so some of these friends believe it or not services on an operating system come vulnerability from time to time and you notice that whenever you get your windows updates rather than just get the windows update and forget about it uh, personally speaking i like to find out what the updates for and what it closes or what it does so then i can come to the understanding oh there's a service land open microsoft have realized it's hackable so they've released an update patch to close it and you can also do that manually yourself okay so let's come out of the services here let's go back to the main screen and close that close that down don't mind time for yeah, don't be a okay so that's your windows 10 services now i want to show you something else quickly if you right click on your taskbar and open up your task manager So let me give you a screenshot of your task manager opened up in Windows 10. Uh, let me show you something here. Okay, so this would be your task manager on your Windows 10 operating system. Or your Windows 8, or Windows 7, or 8.1. let me open this up wider for you i would advise you to watch the video a couple of times if you decide that you want to tweak your system up or you want to make your system more secure you know there's more to there's more to securing a computer than just putting an antivirus program on and just putting a firewall on okay because firewalls you can write to them if you know how they're set up and you can hack your system whether there's a firewall on it or not okay so there's no magic programs out there that's going to secure you but basically it's like driving a cure you have to learn the road signs and etc and etc if you want to use a computer you need to learn what's inside it okay and how the brains work okay so this is the task manager opened here on windows 10 if you right click on your taskbar you will see task manager if you left click on it you can open it and there's also a number of ways of doing it so what you see in front of you here would be ops running on background processes this one here would be my performance of my computer this would be the memory it'll tell you that i've got eight gigs of ddr2 installed it'll tell you that i'm that i'm using 2.8 gigabytes of memory and i've got 5.0 free okay it'll also tell you that i've got four slots in this particular computer 
and they're all used okay so there's two gig sticks in each one this one will give you your, your disc speed reading of how your disc is writing and speed this one will say from 66 to 85 and it will give it to you in, in kilobytes it will tell you the capacity of my hard drive what the, what the page file is, what it's writing at back and forwards to the disc as it spins okay obviously this would be my internet connection it'll say that I'm sending 17.9 megabytes per second it'll also say I'm receiving 3. to 4.8 gigabytes and obviously this is your CPU your process speed that basically the speed that your processor is processing the information that you're using on your computer minus 2.70 gigahertz as you had said this process is 182 and this is the threads and this is the handles it's got two cores some computers have got four cores okay so just to give you an idea about your task monitor this will be the app history this will be your startup programs and if you want to basically have your computer booting fast well then you want to disable programs that you don't need at starting up so we're going to disable java you can either right click it and click disable or you can highlight it and click disable here i want to disable this one here So basically having less programs in startup your computer will boot up quicker and also you'll not be running as much iTunes helper I'll disable that one the iCloud servers you can keep them running if you're backing up so I'm going to disable them for the time being but I don't need them at the minute Microsoft OneDrive will also disable it because I've got enough backed up but it's recommended to leave it enabled okay so user would be myself or the amount of people on your computer okay so what you have here is all the details of all the services running in the background of your system as your operating system is running this is the processor identification number and this is handy if you think that someone has hacked your computer okay because basically if you have a process ID number showing up in your command prompt which I'll talk about at a later date you can actually remove the hacker out of your operating system in a matter of two clicks so we'll cover that video next week probably next Wednesday afternoon about three o'clock on Facebook and I'll show you how to take a hacker out of your computer and what to look for in the matter of seconds okay so your process identification that's what that is that's the status that's the CPU now sometimes with my computers running high I will try to find out what program it is on the CPU that's eating it up and you'll notice that this particular program I'm broadcasting with is XSplit Broadcaster it's using roughly between 70 and 62 on the CPU and it's, it's basically eating up it's, it's, it's a good program but it's very high on the CPU if I right click on it here I can end the task or I can open up, open up the file location to find out exactly where it is or I can go to the service to see what service it's using or I can search online for more information now friends this is all at your fingertips this is all part of your operating system uh, Skype I have suspended it okay if I right click I can actually end the task but it'll ask me do I want to end it do you want to end Skype post I actually click end and it'll, it'll kill it
This particular one is services. What I showed you, okay? This will tell me what services I've got stopped. And also I can I can stop a service by right clicking and clicking stop. So basically if you're using a computer and you don't know what half the stuff is, it is advisable to do a wee bit of research if you want to know exactly what's operating in your system. Uh, some people don't want to know. It doesn't appeal to them. Uh, that's the printer one here, print spooler. So if I thought there's something wrong with my system, there's a number of things I would do. Remote registry stopped. You can get access to it. Okay, so just a bit of information for you. It's technology information. Uh, maybe you've learned something today. Okay. And uh, thanks for watching it. Give us your feedback on Facebook. And let me know what you think. So there's a couple more of these friends I have to close, okay? But it would take too long for the video if I was to go through them all. Okay, thanks very much for listening in for anybody that listens in. Now please support me on YouTube. If you go to YouTube and type in George Russell, you will see a number of tech videos or tech videos and technology information I have given out over the years. And you'll also see one there called PCC A R E M A N Russell. They're actually mine too, okay? We also have a website www.pccaremon.webs.com. Feel free to join it. And there is a shout box there. If you've got a problem with your computer, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. And by doing that, supporting us, it'll save you money. Because it could be somebody, something small there, simple. And there's an easy fix for it. Okay, thanks very much for tuning in. And uh, give us a feedback on what you think about it. Okay, thank you.